My wife Elizabeth and I were both employees at Port Arthur Historic Site Management Authority and were both working there the day of the massacre. My wife Elizabeth was murdered inside the gift shop section of the Broad Arrow Cafe, one of 20 victims murdered thereabouts. I know that Martin Bryant was not the gunman at the massacre at Port, Port Arthur. How do I know? The coroner, Mr Ian Matheson, wrote a letter to a number of survivors of the massacre informing us that Martin Bryant was not the gunman at Port Arthur. In the letter dated the 31st of January 1997, the coroner, Mr Matheson, wrote, As a result of the outcome of the charges against Martin Bryant from the Supreme Court of Tasmania, I write to advise I do not intend to resume the inquest that I opened on the 29th of April 1996. I believe it is not in the interests of the family, friends or witnesses to again traverse the factual situation in a public hearing, particularly when any finding I make must not be inconsistent with the decision of the Supreme Court. Well, I thought long and hard about this statement and discussed the point with friends. You must understand that there were many other facts of the shootings inside the Broad Arrow Cafe that begged a proper open investigation, including workplace safety issues and especially the issue of the emergency exit that were totally outside the issues of the gunman. It was the simple fact that the coroner, Mr Ian Matheson, believed that he could not make any finding that was inconsistent with the findings of the Hobart Supreme Court that really stirred me. The Supreme Court can only make the finding of either guilty or not guilty in the matter brought before it. It follows that for Mr Ian Matheson's inquest into the massacre at Port Arthur to make a finding inconsistent with the Hobart Supreme Court, then the finding could have only been Martin Bryant was not guilty of the charges brought before him. For the coroner, Mr Ian Matheson, to arrive at the decision not to resume the inquest into the death of the 35 people that were murdered at Port Arthur, the massacre due to this reason, which he himself provided, and the coroner must have been aware that Martin Bryant was not guilty of the serious offences which produced 72 charges against police brought against him that day. Representing Martin Bryant, his new lawyer, John Avery. Appointed after Bryant had pleaded not guilty six weeks ago. When Martin Bryant first appeared here in the Supreme Court of Tasmania, he had long blonde hair. Bizarrely, he pleaded not guilty. Uh, you want to see these photos, not very pleasant. Check. Police had tried over a period of months to convince Bryant to tell the truth. In July 1996, Bryant was even shown images of the crime scenes at Port Arthur. Right, this is the Broad Arrow campaign. Okay. You can see a couple of people lying there. He was shown photographs of each of 35 victims. The investigators hoped seeing the horror he had caused might elicit compassion, even a confession. And you reckon I'm 
It did not. I know that you weren't pressuring him to plead guilty to all charges. <laughs> It seemed to me from from a, from day one that the evidence was so overwhelming. And the outcome of a trial would have been so obvious that I was trying to avoid a show trial, a circus, a a pantomime, call it what you like. because that would have been an absolute stupidity. But it also involved having all these witnesses, damaged people, come to court. and have to give evidence where the outcome was always inevitable. Lord, I told you what you've done. What have I? It's killed 35 people. injured several others. Defending Bryant may well have contributed to the path John Avery took next. He embezzled half a million dollars from his law firm to buy art, a passion that became an addiction. He served four years in jail and was disbarred as a lawyer.